At this point, I think a lot of you would have been familiar with the situation that Asmongold is in, but just for a quick TLDR, he was recorded on stream talking about the Israeli-Palestine conflict, saying that he does not feel sorry for the Palestine as they come from an inferior culture, that culture being Islam, and that people who have the G word baked into their law shouldn't be surprised when it happens to them. And about maybe last night, he put out your usual, I'm not apologizing because I think an apology is not enough for what I did, but I'm apologizing anyways type of video, and it highlighted a bunch of stuff that I want to talk about which relates to both what I think of his whole previous tirade and also a larger internet problem that I think has been evolving to a much bigger scale, particularly in the past couple of years. And I, I will also be re referring to the video made by Jack Septicai titled Help that he published yesterday, so be on the lookout for that. For now, we'll talk about the apology part of uh, Asmon Gold's non-apology video. Basically, the first six or seven minutes of it is where he actually addresses the whole incident, talking about how he realizes that he was basically being a racist and an asshole with not only the things that he was saying, but also the way he said those things. And the rest of the video he spent talking about how it is that he's grown to become a person that ends up capable of saying the things that he ended up saying, and that he wants to get away from that and change himself to have a better perspective. And that's good, you know? Step one to solving any problem is recognizing you have a problem. That being said, several things that he talked about I sort of want to give more context and background to, particularly the section where he talked about how he hates religious extremism. Sensitive topic, but I think this is worth exploring because it ties deeply into the misunderstandings that he had about the Palestinians and more specifically about Islam as a religion. Now, the reason that drove him into saying the things he said about Palestine can easily be explained by Asman himself in that same video. And I've always read a lot of very bad things about Islam, uh, and I've made a lot of criticisms of it. I've talked to a lot of people about it, I've heard a lot about it, and I, I've, I've been like watching things about it, and I, I've been like hearing people telling me this is the way it is, but I've never seen it. And of course, what he just described there is just textbook prejudice, you know? I completely predicted it when I saw the full clips of his tirade and the way he talked about the issue, I just immediately knew that either this guy hates Islam or he's just never seen things for himself. And quite frankly, I was right. He did explain that when it comes to Christianity, he personally had some bad experiences himself, to which I can totally respect because that means his opinions had been formed by something that he gathered on his own and whether or not I agree with it shouldn't matter because in his eyes, he was informed of his own experiences and information when making that opinion so I will of course respect it without further reservation. But the moment he starts talking about how he's only heard, read and listened to people around him talk about Islam and that is what he formed his opinion on, that's where I had to go, well, hold on now, sir, you live in America. Not exactly the most impartial country to listen to when it comes to talking about good old Islam here, no? Although, to his credit, he does mention that he wants to go to Middle Eastern countries to see the religion and the culture for himself, and that's also great, but at the same time. Brother, you don't need to go all that far. Find a local Muslim community near you, or better yet, just go and find a mosque. Whether it is that you want to just go sit there, observe the Muslim do their thing, or better yet, you go and talk to the people frequenting them. Ask around about the religion, ask around about what it is to be a practicing Muslim, especially when they are outside of a country that's not majority Muslim. Genuinely, I can say that Muslim and mosque communities in countries that doesn't have an Islam majority are all pretty nice places to be in. I was in Perth for one and a half year, and Friday prayers, big events such as Idul Fitri and all that were very pleasant experiences. The one time I went for Eid prayer there, the guy who prayed next to me, who is basically a complete stranger, gave me a hug at the end of the session. It was a tad bit weird, but still, it was generally a very nice experience. And at the end of almost every Friday prayer session that I had there, there's, at least in that, in that mosque, there's someone who comes up to the imam saying that they want to convert to Islam. 
were just really touching to hear and see unfold as a Muslim. Now, the other thing that Asman will have to really watch out for if he does want to be serious about this change is his chat and his surroundings because I don't know if any of you noticed but the state of the majority of his chat was insane when he was spouting his Palestine tirade calling him based, saying that he's saying nothing but the truth, putting W's all over the chat, effectively just drowning out the people who were really trying to have him calm down and reconsider what it is that he is actually saying. So when he says at the start and at the end of his apology that he's devolved into a person that says all these things and thinks of all these things and that he should have listened to the others who are actively trying to make him a better person or at least you know pay more attention to those people, well Asman, the people who were trying to keep things in check were always there. It's just that burying these comments are people who are actually sitting there and just agreeing with what you are saying which makes you go through this kind of subconscious reaction where you ignore the ones disagreeing with you and you felt that the things you said were by all means justified. So not only would Asman have to look at himself and keep himself in check, but he also has to pay attention to the types of people that were enabling him to say all these things with the bliss of ignorance in the first place. Because I always say, when you see someone doing something out of line or doing something that is considered to be out of line by the general public of that area, you also have to pay attention to who they are surrounding themselves with and what kind of environment these people are surrounding themselves in. And that's sort of where Jack Septic Eye's message comes into play. Yesterday, Jack published this video with a black thumbnail just simply titled Help. And of course, it brought some major concerns initially for some people, but thankfully, Jack himself is relatively fine, but he made that video to promote mental health awareness and also to show that his upcoming Thankmas event will be mainly focusing around helping those who are in need of mental health. You should go watch the video if you haven't and it's a really good video for its cause and who knows, maybe you or someone in your life needs that sort of help right about now. But what I really wanted to highlight from that video is actually from the monologue that he did at the start of it where he mentions three very important points that revolves around the kind of space that the internet has grew to become these days. One, the internet is getting angrier. Number two, everyone's attacking and fighting one another literally everywhere. And number three is the fact that algorithmically driven content is what's pushing the first two evolutions to become so spread and so out of control as it is now. And especially with that last point, I've never felt anything to be so true these days. Because I think the biggest problem that the internet is now facing is something that I'd like to call as the death of context. People just don't want to look into things any further than what they see in the surface anymore or what they see the first time around. There's no such thing as fact checking anymore and there's like this over generalization of what it is that people should see as right or wrong and that it always has to be viewed as this sort of black and white matter when it's not always that simple. The context of certain information regarding some happenings or why is it that some people are doing certain things the way they do just doesn't matter to people anymore and as long as there is something that those people view as going against or is in disagreement with their personal belief then that other perspective must be viewed as nothing but some form of pure evil. We don't even need to talk about the super complex real life world issues to see this phenomenon popping up around our internet spaces. Let's track it back to something that's a lot simpler such as the gaming space. This channel and myself are a part of the Hoyoverse and casual gacha gaming community. And even in this space alone, I've seen a maniacal amount of disagreements and conflicts that all eventually derailed itself into arguments of people being questioned for their life principles. Whether it is talking about racial representation, cultural choices, or even towards something that is entirely insignificant in the grand scheme of things such as whether or not character A should be paired up with character B, there's no telling whether or not talking about these points will end up with you being called a bigot at the end of the discussion. And like Jack said, the problem also lies within the algorithm. People wonder why content creators make drama types of videos and why super old sensationalist channels like Keemstar had the success that it did. And 
You can try to blame it on the algorithm all you want, but at the end of the day, people are the ones who are driving that algorithm. And people are the ones who are telling it what it is that the mainstream audience are actually really looking for and that's what the algorithm ends up pushing and promoting. And honestly, my channel, this channel, is such a simple example of this. I'm a super small content creator, just starting out trying to talk about my favorite games and I don't get tons of views. But the moment I touch upon a subject that had any trace amount of drama in it, it suddenly gets a decent amount of boost and views. I wouldn't be surprised if this video ended up getting more views than I normally do because as it stands, this is what people are looking for, especially if you're not an established channel from years ago. And it's not just a YouTube thing, but every other platform like Jack said has this current climate in hand. Of course, the one that people will probably immediately think of when it comes to algorithmically optimized drivel would probably be X, and you don't even need a rabbit hole for you to see the kind of things that get argued about there. I don't know, it just feels like that nowadays there's this glut of need for certain people to not only disagree with someone else, but to also make other people bend their principles and overall values of what they might think is right or wrong until it becomes the very image of what those certain people establish is right or wrong. And like I said before, if they don't do that, if like those other people don't bend their principles, then those certain people will always say whatever it is that needs to be said to make sure that that other perspective is always viewed to be as the evil side and the side that people shouldn't follow or give attention or give platform to. And at the end of it all, those certain people, they just get away with it because of the death of context. What people see first is what people would think to be right. And since no one bothers to check anymore, then it just becomes this endless lane of misinformation and outright slander in some cases. A very quick example of this you can just see from the Hoyo vs English VA dramas where people thought the company just outright fired this VA because, you know, she was supporting some sort of racial statement against what the company is doing. And People didn't even bother to realize that, wait, there's a voice acting strike happening right now. It's, you know, instead of just thinking the more logical route, they just immediately go for the, oh, the company is racist, we should cancel them route. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Somewhere at the end of his early monologue, Jack said that the internet was supposed to be a place where the world can connect and do amazing things. But all it seemed to do was highlight problems even more. And the only other quote that I think can balance that thought is Mike Tyson's ever famous line, social media made y'all way too comfortable with disrespecting people and not getting punched in the face for it. And I find that to be very much in line with what I think about the internet because if anyone ever asked me what the biggest double-edged sword ever made in the history of humanity is, then my answer will always be the internet. It's a place where it expands people's horizons and their potential of what they can discover to become virtually limitless. And it's, it's a great thing to have. But it is also a place where people can spread any sort of negativity and misinformation and outright trash without ever being held accountable for it. So in Asman's part, I do hope that he's able to give himself a new perspective to make sure that he doesn't have these sort of thoughts in the future or at least even if he does have these sort of thoughts in the future, I hope he'll be able to find a better way to deliver it to the audience if he truly believes that what he's saying is correct. Because I always have this point of view of if you have an opinion or you have something to say, there is nothing stopping you from saying it in a nice, calm, and more conservative way instead of, you know, just outright blazing yourself out there, except in, you know, some acceptable scenarios. And on Jacksepticeye's side, I also hope that this issue becomes something that people can pay a bit more attention to regardless of how small of a change each person can actually make when it comes to the overall climate of the internet itself. Not only would it be better if the internet at least becomes or returns to that more of a logical space that it was meant to be, but it is also imperative that people who really do need help with mental issues get the help that they need because as it stands, more and more people are dying to it than they are going out of this world peacefully and naturally as they should have been. That's about all I have to say and thank you guys for sticking around. Until the next video, the name's Leafy and I'll see you all next time. Sayonara.